So I want to talk a little bit today and set the stage of the standard of how we are supposed to walk in Christ. There's a passage in Matthew 22, 36 and 40, and Jesus is explains the greatest commandment. So he had just silenced the Sadducees and one of the Pharisees, the teachers of religious law, comes to Jesus. He said, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment? They were trying to track him to see what he was going to say. Jesus says, The first and greatest commandment is love the Lord God with all your heart. But he said there's a second that is equally important And that's love your neighbor as yourself. How can we serve someone if, first off, we don't love the Lord God with all our heart and have the Lord dwelling among our temple? And how can we serve someone if we don't have love for our brother? And I get it. You guys have been in situations, maybe, and and this goes beyond family members. You've been in situations where your brother's made you mad your sister made you mad. I know you guys can relate to that. But, but beyond that, um, at school, I know people have offended you guys. How, 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 do you, how do we show love in situations like that? And this is where it's so important that we get in the Word and have the Spirit of the Lord in us. Because see, Jesus is the model. If Jesus is not your only model of how we walk in Christ, then we've missed it. We've completely missed it. There's another passage in Mark 9 where the apostles are arguing. Just to say the context, Jesus asked them, what were you discussing on the road? But they didn't have an answer because they had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. Could you imagine how they felt? I mean, they see Jesus perform all these miracles and then he, Jesus overhears them talking about who is the greatest. You know, completely selfish when we're called to be selfless. He sat down and called the 12 disciples over to him and he said, whoever wants to be first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. See, we're born into sin. We're absolutely born into the flesh. And so when you hear this, whoever wants to be first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. We don't just have that when we're born. Like, absolutely not. Like, because in our flesh, wired into our DNA is we want to be the best, puffed up, ambitious, selfish ambitions. So when we hear something like this, especially people of the world, they're like, what? You're telling me I, if I want to be first, I've got to be last? But that's the gospel, because we're called to be servants. And, and, and even, even in our DNA, we're, we're selfish. Sometimes it's all about us. I know you guys can relate to that, and it's easy to, to get sidetracked with that. And I just want to encourage you. There's a passage also in Matthew 20, 28, where he says, Even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve And what a, what a price God paid for us. See, Philippians 2.5 says, We must have the same attitude as Christ Jesus. This is not a suggestion. It's not an encouragement. But it's a command. It says we must have the same attitude as Christ Jesus. If we're going to be effective and efficient to build God's kingdom. Because let me tell you something. Each and every one of you out here, you're special. The devil may be telling you otherwise. People may be telling you otherwise. Life beats you in the ground. But let me tell you something. Each and every one of you are special and we're all called to use our gifts to glorify and advance the kingdom of God. I want you guys to think about that. Remember that scripture, Philippians 2.5. We must have the same attitude as Christ Jesus. That is Christianity summed up with that one verse. That is how we are supposed to walk, talk, model ourselves so we can build His kingdom. I'm going to ask Landon to come forward. And as, he, as he's getting ready, I want you guys to 
examine yourselves today. I know that we, we worshiped last night, but I understand where you guys are at. You know, in a large group setting, it's easy to, you know, want to worry about what everybody else is thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know you guys can probably relate to that. And, but I don't, want, I don't want insecurities and fear and anxiety to keep you from coming face to face with your Creator and having an encounter with God. So as Landon plays this song, I just want you guys to know um, we're here for you. It doesn't matter what you guys are going through today. God is bigger. You may be in here, you say, Brigham, I'm hurting. I'm not, I'm not living as the Christian I want to be here. I'm, I'm heavy burdened by something that's going on right now. And, and I don't see a way out. Myself, I've even been beat down the past month. I've had friends die. I've got health news about my mother. Among so many things. And yeah, there's been times I want to give up. Nowhere to turn. But that's the thing. God's strength is perfected in weakness. That's where God can move. And instead of turning our back on God when things are hard, that's when we need to seek His face even more. And as He plays, imagine this is an altar. And I just want you guys, if you feel led, don't worry about what anybody's thinking. You come up here and you leave all your burdens and give it to God. Because listen, I tell the adults this too. And, and for myself, if I or we walk into church and we leave the same way we came, why did we come? We wasted our time. That's why we do what we do. That's why we have these meetings. Is so we can grow in Christ and build each other up and be set free. There's nothing God cannot set you free from. We've been given authority over all that. And Christ paid that at the cross. And I just want you guys to know that we love you and we're here for you.